So today we've got a 2005 Peugeot Boxer. It's come in with a red engine management light on and no speedo working at all. Gone through the fault codes. It's got EGR solenoid, um, glow plug, third piston shut off, quite a few different codes listed in there. So we're going to quickly run through the diagram, work out if there's something which is linked to it, which I assume is going to be a fuse, and then find out what fuse that is. Make sure it does affect all the things which are coming up on the scan tool and the speedo, and then work out whether it's just a blown fuse or whether I've got a short circuit. Right, so we've had a look at the diagram. We have found we've got airflow meter, um, EGR solenoid one, EGR solenoid two, um, glow plug, third piston cut off. Um, it does power something else. Oh, it's got a crankcase breather down here. Um, so obviously powers that, but it doesn't say anything about the speedo. If you go over to the, so that goes back to fuse 11 in the under bonnet fuse box onto the other diagram and it says where are we da, da, da. there's a vehicle speed sensor and the power from here actually power something else as well a oh, fuel water separator again fuse 11 under bonnet fuse box so that's where we're going to check first i assume that's going to be blown but has it just blown deteriorated or has it got dead short so that's what we're going to do next Voltage on one side, but we've got a full earth path down the other. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that fuse out, get the meter set up and just do a resistance check, see if that is a dead earth or see if, see if we've got any resistance. Could you put another fuse in it, see if it pops, but better to uh, confirm what we're doing before we put a fuse in it but I will show you on the meter what it's going to read, then I'll put a fuse in it anyway, just to prove it. Okay, so we have got 16 ohm resistance. So that does feel like a semi short to earth. So I'm going to try another fuse in it. And see if it pops, eh? And yeah, it has popped. So we have got too much resistance to earth or not enough resistance to earth. Um, so now we've got to work out which way that goes, where it's going to. We've got that crankcase breather. Had a few problems with them, but that is permanently live. So uh, I'm going to strip it out, hopefully be able to work out roughly where this is going. And I'll show you a few tests we do when we're doing these. So we've gone into the output of the fuse and then we can trace it down down the wire and it follows it down to a point. If you look down here, as we follow it down, the arrow moves from one way to the other. So it's saying, and it goes backwards and forwards. So it's actually saying that the fault is in that part of the loom. So this will trace it to a point where if it goes past the fault, it'll actually put the arrow to go back down to it. I don't think that's right, but we are going to check there. I think that's where the wire's going down and it probably splices off to all of its extras. So if that is the point, we need to get to that point anyway. So I'm going to strip that part of the loom out and I'll show you what we find. Right, so I've just split that loom apart down there and no, it, there is no fault there. It's not splicing off. It is just these things can go all over the place where it gets multiple signals with different signals going back down and forwards on wires. And I'll show you sort of what is going on. Well, not even what's going on, but why that can get confusing. So the next thing we would normally do is put a bulb straight into that output signal, what's got the earth going down to it. When that bulb lights up, we know we've got short circuit. If you disconnect the battery completely, that means the only thing what should be going around this car is that amp draw, which on this one is about 0.7 of an amp. So I should be able to trace that now down for all these multiple wires, but it's not as easy as that. I'll show you why. So we've got this draw down this wire, which we know is going in. So the maximum we should be able to draw, like I say, 
0.7 of an amp. But otherwise, that's got two amp. How has that got two amp on it? This one, this loom here, it's got about an amp. With the battery disconnected, we've only got the earth connected up and on the positive side is literally that bulb. Hmm? So we're meant to be isolating all the circuits just so we can see that 0.7 of the bulb, but it's got other voltages coming up. And do you know why? It's counter fan. We've got leisure batteries connected to it, possibly solar panels connected to it. So solar panels could be drawing, trying to charge that battery. There's multiple different things it can be. Uh, if it was a normal car with one battery, one power source, and you had it disconnected, this would work. But this one is getting a bit confusing because we're getting back feeds and stuff like that. So I'm not going to isolate that circuit. What I'm going to try and do is isolate the circuit straight out of this fuse box. If I start pulling some plugs, when that bulb goes out, I know it goes down that wire. And I've just got to find out what pin it goes on that wire to feed everything. And then I can literally put that into there. Um, and then try and trace it from that loom and follow it around, see where it's going. So I right, let's see if that does work. Yeah, so that's all disconnected. So yeah, it is going down that plug, which eliminates a lot of the other things. Uh, does it? No, that does go down to there. Yeah, that, that one does. Let me show you what I mean about before and after the relay. So it's this fuse what we're going into. So we're putting it down here where we know that we've got short on one of these wires. If that fuse was before the relay, if we undone the plug, what took the control out of that, that might be the reason why if you move multiple plugs, it could turn the relay off and then we'd lose the earth path. But no, that's not looking like that. So now we know we're coming out of that plug. All we've got to do is find out which pin it is put the bulb of it into the pin and then try and trace it down that way. Let's have a go. Right, so we know it's on that plug. Now, if we got our meter, go underneath to all the terminals. In fact, bring you around this side. So that's going in. So hopefully we've only got one voltage feed coming out of these pins. And then we'll be able to see. So I've got it on. One volt feed, which is coming from the bulb on that pin. As long as we haven't got it on any others, we know it's only going down a single path. Which is right. But just to confirm, we're going to hold it onto the pin we know it's on, remove the bulb, and that goes. So back in. So there we go. So that is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Down on this black plug. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can remove this into that one. We know we got our amp draw down there about 0 0.7, 0 0.6, and then down here, We've just got to trace that 0.6 all the way down to find out where it goes. So I can trace that down that wire and hopefully see which way it tees off, whether it goes down to the gearbox, down to the crankcase breather, up to the EGR valves, something like that. So I'm going to trace that down, see which way it goes. And when I find which way it goes, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we have stripped the back of this plug off. We know what color wire it is now and it's blue. So that runs down into the main engine loom. Um, we've followed it down. We can see which one it is and I'll show you what we found. We've actually opened that loom up where we was testing with the beep tester to see if it split off. And yeah, it obviously didn't. It will do somewhere. Um, but what we found is, so if I put this around the main loom, so with it clamped around the whole loom, it is showing zero but we know it is on this big, well, we know it's on one of the blue wires and there's a few of them down here. So we can put them around a bundle of them and then separate off from there, find out which one it is. It's not that one. So it is that one. And just double check because we've got some funny voltages on this. If I just disconnect the bulb, 
connect it back up. Yeah, the drawer comes and goes. But again, if I put it around most of the wires, or around all of the wires, it shows zero. So you do actually have to separate all the wiring because other wires can interfere with it. That's why we're trying to only use the one power source, but this car is doing a bit of funny thing. But it will trace it all the way you're going down that wire. So what we need to do now is find out where that goes up and where it splits off to, and then we can determine which way on the car it's going. Is it going down gearbox end? Is it coming up this way? We don't know. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll show you when I pulled this apart and found out where the splice is. Right, so we have found where this splits. Uh, let's just show you this part. So the voltage is coming up on one single blue wire. It goes into this and it's splitting off this way. So there's one, two, three, four, five going that way. And there's obviously one in and then one, two, three, four, five going out. So that's how many things this is feeding. We've got one in and we've got 10 going out. That's where we need to split and work out which way it's going. Is it going down to the gearbox end, etc. So we've run through all these wires and it is showing us that it's up, coming up this way. So that's all the outputs. And we've got our nearly 0.6 of an amp. On the other end, if we disregard the input wire, which is the grey one, the one without the tracers on it, and just go down them, that should have zero going down it. Which it has. So we know feeding this and it's feeding, we know that it's going down these five. So that's half the circuit straight away, yeah? So now we can determine which wire it is just by going over single ones. Which is not that one. It's on that wire. So if we give it a pull, we can see it pulling down this wire. So we know it's going up here somewhere. It's going to be going to one of these. Again, we can open that up and find out which one it is by splitting them. So how many have we got coming up? Not that one. It is that one. So again, it has got tight up here, but we've only got a few things it can be. So all the time that light's on, we know we've got the short. So if we disconnect some of these valves, hopefully, not that one, not that one. We've got the glow plug module. Not that. This is the breather module. There we go. See that? So that is our short. 100%. So, check this out. One last thing. We are showing it on, which why was it? That one? Yeah. 0.67 amp. If we put it on that wire, showing nothing. And the reason why that is, I go into quite detail. I go into a lot of detail on this on our mechanic mindset. We've made a lot of videos on this now on mechanic mindset app. So go and check that out. But the reason why it is is that is a short to the component. So the earth what's going down to the component is drawing and the power going down is, is feeding and then it's drawing back down the earth. So one is cancelling out the other. So if you just went onto the main live into that, it would show it and the earth. In fact, I will show you. Watch this. Let's open that up. So that is our feed. 
it's got it going in that way, so it's not minus, yeah? Goes down through there. And that's our earth. Let's go and get out the other side as well. So that's our minus because if we do it the right way, the flow of it is going that way now, and it's not a minus. That's why you can't use this to determine exactly where it's going just by going over the multiple side of the loom. So go check out Mechanic Mindset. I'll say we're doing a lot of these type of videos on there, but they're more technical training videos than they are these type of entertainment videos. So that's what it is. We need to get one of them. In fact, what I will do, I'm going to put a fuse in that now. We're going to power that up with a fuse. Right, so this is the power what we have connected to the bulb. There is our, we're going to put a fuse in line, connect that into the feed out. That's all okay. Now, if I connect this up, that is going to blow. Also, we haven't introduced the cameraman. A couple of people noticed it last week, but there he is. That's Mr. Cameraman. So give me a little bit of love in the comments down below. And there we go, it's another one done. So let us know what you think of that. Stick in the comment down below what you think of the new cameraman. He's done really well. We get a lot more content out over all the multiple channels now, but the long form stuff, we are trying to make a little bit better, a bit more zoom in stuff, things like that. Um, so yeah, let us know what you think about that. Also go and check out Mechanic Mindset. He is in the link down below. I think he's got a discount going. I think it's something like 120 pound for the year now with the free multimeter. So go and have a look at that. And if you do want to support the channel, just give us a little subscribe down below. It costs you nothing to subscribe, but it does help the channel, shows everyone that you like us and it's worth watching. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.